welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Now let's talk about cardiovascular disorders in pediatric patients. So the first type we're going to talk about is heart defects with increased pulmonary blood flow. So the first one is called an atrial septal defect. So this is an abnormal opening between the atria that causes increased flow of oxygenated blood to the right side of the heart. Right atrial and ventricular enlargement occurs. Signs and symptoms are signs of decreased cardiac output. So we'll see decreased peripheral pulses, feeding difficulties, irritability, restlessness, lethargy, tachycardia, oliguria, pale, cool extremities, and hypotension. Then we have atrioventricular canal defect. This results from the incomplete fusion of the endocardial cushions, and this is seen in Down syndrome. Signs and symptoms include a murmur, cyanosis with increases with crying, and signs of decreased cardiac output, which is the same as above, including decreased peripheral pulses, feeding difficulties, irritability, restlessness, lethargy, tachycardia, algeria, pale cool extremities, and hypotension. Then we have patent ductus arteriosus. So this is the shunt connecting the aorta and pulmonary artery does not close. Signs and symptoms are a murmur, a wide pulse pressure, and again, those signs of decreased cardiac output. Then we have ventricular septal defect. So this is an abnormal opening between the right and left ventricles, most close spontaneously during the first year of life. But people who have these, it has not closed. Signs and symptoms are murmur and signs of heart failure can be common. All right, now let's talk about obstructive defects. So the first type is aortic stenosis. So this is a narrowing of the aortic valve causing resistance to blood flow from the left ventricle to the aorta. Causes decreased cardiac output, left ventricular hypertrophy, and pulmonary congestion. So signs and symptoms are a murmur, signs of decreased cardiac output, including decreased peripheral pulses, feeding difficulties, irritability, restless lethargy, tachycardia, algeria, pale, cool extremities, and hypotension. They'll also have exercise intolerance, chest pain, and dizziness. Then we have coarctation of aorta. This is a localized narrowing near the ductus arteriosus, Signs and symptoms include the blood pressure is higher in the upper extremities than the lower. That's a key sign. And again, going through these and finding out the things that are specific to each one is really important because that's what they're going to give you in a question. You're going to see bounding pulses in arms, but weak femoral pulses and cool lower extremities. You may see signs of heart failure, decreased cardiac output, headaches, dizziness, epistaxis, fainting, from hypertension. Then you may see pulmonary stenosis. So this is narrowing at the entrance of the pulmonary artery that causes right ventricular hypertrophy and decreased pulmonary blood flow in the right ventricle may be hypoplastic. Signs and symptoms are murmur, if severe cyanosis at birth, and decreased cardiac output where we see all those signs we went over before. Now let's talk about defects with decreased pulmonary blood flow. So the first one is tritology of Fallot. So this includes four deficits. We have ventricular septal deficit, pulmonary stenosis, overriding aorta, and a right ventricular hypertrophy. If pulmonary vascular resistance is higher than systemic resistance, the shunt is from right to left. If systemic resistance is higher than pulmonary resistance, the shunt is from left to just. Signs and symptoms are cyanosis at birth, a murmur, episodes of hypoxia and cyanosis. We call these TET spells. The child may squat during these episodes, which helps to increase the return of blood to the heart. They may have clubbing of their fingers and they may have poor growth. Our nursing interventions for a TET spell is to place the child in a knee chest position, administer 100% oxygen, administer morphine sulfate, and administer fluids IV. Then we have tricuspid atresia. 
So this is when the tricuspid valve fails to develop. There's no communication from the right atrium and right ventricle, so blood will flow through. Blood flows through an ASD or patent form and oval to the left side of the heart. Blood flows through a VSD to the right ventricle and out to the lungs, usually associated with pulmonic stenosis, and it mixes oxygenated and unoxygenated blood. So signs and symptoms are cyanosis, tachycardia, shortness of breath, and clubbing. Then we have mixed deficits. So the first one is hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This is an undeveloped left side of the brain. Signs and symptoms include mild cyanosis, signs of heart failure, fatal in the first few months of life without intervention. Then we have total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. This is failure of the pulmonary veins to join the left atrium. It mixed blood is returned to the right atrium and shunted from right to left atrium through the ASD. Signs and symptoms are right side of heart hypertrophies, signs of heart failure, and cyanosis. Then we have trunctus arteriosus, so this is failure of a normal separation of the pulmonary artery and the aorta, blood from both the ventricle, ventricles mix, signs and symptoms are murmur, hypoxemia and cyanosis, moderate to severe heart failure and poor growth. Then we have transposition of the great arteries, so this is pulmonary artery leaves the left ventricle and the aorta leaves the right ventricle. There's no communication between systemic and pulmonary circulation. We'll see severe cyanosis at birth and cardiomegaly. So our nursing interventions for cardiovascular defects include monitoring vital signs, respiratory status, and lung sounds, signs of heart failure such as periorbital edema or dependent edema, fluid restriction if needed, monitor INOs, daily weights, high calorie nutrition, and if respiratory distress occurs, place the child in reverse Trendelenburg position, elevating the head and upper body to decrease the work of breathing. Nursing interventions for a hypercyanotic tet spell. So place the infant in that knee to chest position, administer 100% O2, administer morphine sulfate, and administer fluids IV. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.